What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today is going to be the full in-depth review of the Hoover Wind Tunnel Tempo Bagged Upright Vacuum. This particular machine is model number UH30330, I think, it's a bunch of threes and zeros. And this particular machine, you can pie, you can, you can pie, you can buy, you can't really pie it, although that would be very delicious, but you can buy it, in fact, for depending on where you find it anywhere from like 120 to 180 sometimes 200 dollars this is one of those machines and hoover's lineup along with the air steerable where there's just a huge price range so of course try to find it on the lower end if you can but usually you can find this machine around 150 dollars and it's one of the best budget machines that you can get and in my opinion it's the vacuum to buy if you are shopping for a hoover this particular machine is excellent. It's very versatile. It has a brush roll shut off, so you can use it on bare floors, and it has a very good brush roller that deep cleans carpets very well. It has a nice convenient headlight and back check indicator, something you might be familiar with with the legacy wind tunnels and Bissell power forces, so it's nice to have a machine on the market that still has those features. You've got a 30-foot cord, a decent set of attachments, a relatively long hose that isn't quite long enough to get up to the top of the stairs, but is still enough to get a good amount of cleaning out of it. You do have an extension wand and crevice tool, a turbo brush that is a piece of crap, and a combination upholstery and dusting brush, which is kind of a happy medium for both. Of course, it's not as good as having a dedicated dusting brush and dedicated upholstery tool, but it actually still does an okay job at dusting, and it does a good job at cleaning upholstery too, which is what I've elected to use it for since my turbo brush on my unit is defective. My turbo brush specifically has an issue where for whatever reason, it makes a loud buzzing sound that sounds really bad, and I'll demonstrate that in a sec, but it shouldn't be making that noise. One other thing I like about the machine is it's relatively lightweight at only 15 pounds, so it's not too heavy. It's not necessarily lightweight per se, but it's not too heavy. It has fingertip power controls, and overall, it's just a very, very good machine for the price. And again, 30-foot cord. That's one of my things that I really like about it. So many machines in this price range have, you know, 25, 28-foot cords. And in my opinion, 30-foot cords are the minimum in 2022, and this vacuum has that. One other thing that I will mention is that this generally comes with a bag dock. And now I would show the bag dock and show you how to put a bag in it. But unfortunately, I've actually lost the dock in the time that I took it off. But it's held on with four screws. You can see the holes right there. And there's a red switch on it that you simply press, and that allows the bag to fall off into the trash. And you simply slide the bag up into the dock, and then you can simply put the bag door back on, and that allows you to easily pop the bag in. Now, I've elected to remove the dock and put the bag on the old-fashioned way by attaching it to the collar because I find that just has a better seal. I found that with the bag dock, it actually leaked a good amount of dust into the bag chamber and just made the bag door a lot harder to actually put on. So personally, I recommend just putting the bags in the old-fashioned way, just pushing it onto the collar. You can just simply push the cardboard up against the back of this, and you'll know whenever it's on all the way because it won't move anymore. So this is a Hoover Genuine Type A HEPA bag. So I definitely recommend going the route of HEPA bags because if you do that, you get the best filtration that you could possibly get out of a machine in this price range. HEPA bags are the way to go, especially on budget vacuums, because bagless machines in this price range usually have very poor quality filtration. So if filtration is your main concern and you're on a budget, going with these bags is the way to go. I will link bags in the description, both the genuine Hoover Type A HEPA bags, and if you want much cheaper HEPA bags, Bissell Style 7 bags do fit on this machine as well, both in the dock and on the collar. So I will rec I will also list the HEPA bags that I use in all my Bissell units since those are incredibly affordable and yet still allow for great filtration. Now right under here you do have a pre-motor filter which you can wash and or replace but as long as the bag doesn't break or anything like that you shouldn't have to. You can see I have a couple particles on it but this is the kind of thing where you know you probably won't have to change this. I know I had a similar machine, the Bissell Power Force, which I'd used for over a decade, and I never had to clean this filter. So as long as you have the bag installed correctly, you shouldn't have to do anything with this filter. Maybe once every five years or so, change it. Now right here is the exhaust filter. 
Now this you probably want to change about every about every year or two. Again, this is a washable type of material, but I haven't had very much luck washing these, so I'd recommend just changing this about every two years or so. And that's it as far as actual maintenance. The good news is, is that this does have a belt, but the belt is a long life belt, so you shouldn't have to change it too often, but I will show you how to do that in a sec. And you can see the bag right here is about half full, and it has not caused any issues with performance. I haven't had to change a bag yet, although to be fair, it's because I haven't been using this thing as my only machine. I've been using it alongside other machines like my Dyson, and it's been behaving very well. So you just simply line the line this up right here. Sometimes the bag will get in the way, and that can make it a little bit awkward to put the bag door back on with one hand. But if you have two hands, you can easily lift this up. So you just kind of, I kind of just scoop the bag up with the bag door like that. Put it down like that. And once it lines up, you can simply click it into place. It, it wiggles around a bit, but once you line it up, you can push this into place. Just like that. And now it's locked into place. There is a bit of an air gap on the side, and that's something that I initially complained about. When you turn on the machine, it actually sucks it down, and I did not notice any air leaking out of this side, so that shouldn't be a problem. Right here on the front, you do have a nice headlight. A lot of vacuums don't have this nowadays. I really like this. It doesn't work as well as a machine where the headlight is actually on the base itself, because of course this moves as you recline the vacuum, but it is a nice long-lasting LED bulb and you can easily access it with only two Phillips head screws if this bulb does burn out. If I figure out what type of bulb this uses, I'll link replacement bulbs in the description. If I do, that is, because I'm not sure. Right here is the brush roll surface selector. So you simply leave it in this position for the brush roll to be on, and then you click it down like this for it to turn off. Do this while the machine is off. You don't want to do this while the machine's on, because otherwise the belt will start and stop sporadically, and that will cause damage to this belt over time. So you want to make sure to have the machine off whenever you switch this. And you want to have the, the brush roller off in this position whenever you're doing bare floors or whenever you're using the attachments. So again, if you're vacuuming carpets and you want to use the attachments, put it upright, turn it off, wait till the brush will stop spinning, press this button, and then go on with your tool cleaning. I generally store the machine in this position as well, because usually whenever I clean house, I usually will do all the upholstery and all the above floor cleaning first, then go around and do the carpets and floors, because that's the way you're supposed to do it. So that way, while you are cleaning you know, up above, if you knock anything onto the floor, then you'll get it whenever you do that part. Right here is our five position height adjustment. So we have it from high carpet all the way down to hard floors. I usually leave it on the second to highest setting for my carpet. So it says push down and turn, so keep that in mind. If you're trying to turn it normally, it, you have to kind of push it down and then turn it. But once you push it down, it's pretty easy to turn. And it actually is a lot more, it feels a lot more sturdy than the equivalent Bissell dials. So it feels like it's a little bit more refined. That's probably a result of it having to be pushed down and turned. But regardless, that is there. We do have a little window right up front. So that way you can see if there's anything wrapped around the brush or if the brush roll is spinning or not. That's a nice feature as well. We have a little clear bumper on the front. I actually saw one reviewer on Amazon. What a crunching noise. I wasn't sure what that was. Okay. So there is one user on Amazon that actually modded this thing to have LED headlights, like actual LED lights in this entire strip. Like, so the entire front of this was lit up in LEDs, which was really cool. So obviously most people aren't going to do that, but that's something you can do if you want, and it looks really cool. Speaking of looking cool, I personally love this turquoise color. Right up here we have our bag check indicator. If this indicator turns red, check your bag make sure it's not full and needs changed. If it is, if it is not full and you don't have any issues with the bag and this is still red, then check the machine for clogs. Right up here is a turbo brush. Right up there is the on off switch, fairly self explanatory. Back here we have our wheels which unfortunately are not rubber coated. Not a fan of that, considering this does have a brush roll shut off and is designed to be used on floors. I wish it had rubber coated wheels. The good news is these wheels are a lot softer of a plastic than most other plastics that you see on wheels. Like they do have like a soft touch coating as far as the plastic, but they're still not rubber coated. So 
They definitely wouldn't scratch floors nearly as badly as some other machines, or potentially at, at all, as long as nothing gets stuck on these. But still not ideal. I wish you would have actual rubber coated wheels on these wheels, or rubber coating on these wheels, I should say. Right there is our pedal release. You simply press that if you want to recline the machine and push it up until it clicks into place. Right here is the release for our hose. So if you want to release the hose for above floor cleaning, just push that button, hose pops out, and there's your hose. You can put your attachments right in there, or this is a standard inch and a quarter fitting, so if you want to put standard inch and a quarter attachments on this, you can. However, because this fits over the attachments instead of the attaching, instead of instead of the attachments fitting over this, it makes it to where some things don't really fit properly, but putting the extension wand on does fix that because then you can put anything on the end of the extension wand that you want. Now speaking of extension wands, we do have ex the extension wand and a crevice tool, which is a decent length. So I do wish the extension wand was a little bit longer and you can buy extra extension wands or longer ones. Also, this is a little bit awkward to get back onto this peg, but you can do it. And also, this little peg right here is not very good quality. It's not nearly as good quality as a lot of the Bissell ones, so this does sometimes break off, so you want to be careful with that. Right here, we have the aforementioned brush. Stores right there. Here is our lower cord hook. Here is our upper cord hook, which is reversible, so we can move that to quickly release the cord and we have a cord clip right here to keep the cord out of the way the cord does come out right down here so you do want to run the cord up into that clip so that way you don't run over your cord right here is the screw that you would use to put the handle in to put it together whenever you get it in the box right here is the various serial and model number information so it's uh30301 i, had, I almost had that right Right here is the side exhaust, and if we look on the bottom, here we have our brush roll, belt, and bottom plate, as well as our height adjustment wheels, which again are a soft touch plastic, but not exactly coated in any sort of rubber, so it could potentially scratch your floors if you're not too careful, but as long as, as, long as nothing actually gets caught on these, you shouldn't have any problems. One thing I do really like about this is you can get to the belt and the brush roll without any sort of tools. Now, don't blink or you'll miss this. So you grab this little lever and push this to the side. Then you move this little tab out of the way. And bam, the bottom plate pops right off. So it's held in with three little tabs right here. And here it is. Through. So there was some dust on the brush roll. We can see this is spinning freely since, I, again, I have it in the bare floor mode so the belt isn't engaged. So you can get to the belt and change that very easily. You can get to the brush roll and change this very easily. Again, I'll link all these parts in the description. This also means you can very easily pull out the brush roller if you want to pull any hair or strings or anything like that off of this, or if you need to access this lower hose in case there is a clog. So that works very well. I'm going to put this upright to get this dust off of it, just so that's not all dirty. There we go. So we can see that looks good. Now I do notice that hair tends to collect on this side since there's no suction. But the actual brush roll here does a decent job at resisting hair tangles. It's not the best. I The older wind tunnels tend to do a little bit better since they're more rounded. But this still does a decent job at not only grooming and cleaning, but also keeping hair off of the brush. So if you have a lot of problems with hair getting wrapped around your brush, this one you won't have as many troubles with it as with some other vacuums, including the air steerable that I just reviewed. So you just simply push this in, push the plate into those tabs, push it on, and I usually hold this in and click this in there, that holds that in place, then click, click this into place, and there we go. Now the bottom plate is already completely back on with no problems. And if I press this button to turn on the brush roller, now you can see I can spin it just fine. And there are instructions right here as well. So, and again, since this, is, since this is a long life belt, you don't have to worry about changing the belt nearly as often as a lot of other machines. 
in this price range. So you have a lot of benefits there. So overall, I do really like this machine. For whatever reason, my unit doesn't seem to actually clean as well as some other units that are basically the exact same model, even though even if those models are much older. So I feel like the brush roll on my unit might be a little bit defective, but I don't even know if I'm going to bother trying to get that replaced be because Hoover's track record for support has been really bad as of late. And that is one thing I would recommend. If you do get this machine, which I do recommend, but if you do get this machine, keep your receipt because Hoover is very, they're very bullish on that. They want you to have your receipt, otherwise you completely revoke yourself of your warranty rights if you don't keep your receipt. Now this machine does have, I believe, a two-year warranty. I could be wrong about that. But the warranty on this is not going to be very good. But the good news is, is that this is a decent quality machine. So hopefully you shouldn't have to collect on that. But this is a budget, a budget machine. So as long as you take care of it, it will still last a good long time. Keyword if you take care of it. Change the bags as you should. Keep the brush roller clean. Don't suck up anything you're not supposed to. And don't throw it down the stairs. And you should be fine. So as far as all of that this machine is really good and I personally don't choose to use it over the sanitary ELSO 4110A despite the fact that this machine is more versatile because I find the noise on this machine to be not very pleasant it's not necessarily like a bad pitch as far as the motor but it does run at about 84 85 decibels whenever I tested it with a sound meter and that's a little bit too loud for my liking so it's kind of a loud machine but it is tolerable it's definitely not the worst that I've heard and at least it's not high pitched like a lot of other motors so there is a trade-off there so overall my thoughts on this machine are if you are looking for around $150 machine that is very versatile but you don't want to get something you know from shark or Dyson you want to get something that's a bit better well i guess in the case of dyson that'd be much more expensive but mainly shark is what you'd be looking at in this price range you'd be looking at other hoovers sharks bissels that sort of thing you know this is a really good option and for a lot of people bagged is the right way to go even though a lot of people are dead set on bagless you know the bagless version of this machine isn't technically available anymore but this machine is although it was just replaced by another unit so time will tell if this review will be relevant after I post this because knowing my luck the second I finally get a machine and review it it gets discontinued and then my video flops because nobody bought the machine anymore but let's hope that didn't happen with this because I do like this machine and I've looked at the newer version that com that is supposed to replace this and it doesn't seem to have a brush roll shut off or a lot of the good features that this machine has yet doesn't appear to have any decrease in price so this is still the one to get in my opinion there is a max version of this that is more expensive. That's sim that the main difference is that it has a longer clear hose, a larger base, and the advantage of that machine is that the brush roll automatically shuts off when you put it in the upright position, whereas this one you have to do it manually. Other than that, there isn't much of a difference between the two, and for my money, I recommend saving your money and getting this because this width of a brush roll is uh, better in my opinion, and it's overall just a lot better value. So, with that said, this is one of the vacuums that is on my recommended list, even though I do have my issues with it, namely that turbo brush having issues and just Hoover's really bad track record as of late in terms of my experience, but that is something to keep in mind, is that you may have some issues, so be careful, but it is a really good machine, and it's definitely one of my go-to recommendations. So, I will demonstrate that quirky little issue with the turbo brush real quick, because it sounds really bad. You might want to plug your ears for this. Let me turn this back off. So that's really weird, I don't know why it does that. But, and yeah, so this turbo brush is crap, it doesn't work very well, and it overall just is not pleasant to use but the good news is again since this is a standard fitting you can in fact replace it and use a different turbo brush instead including if you have a turbo brush from an older hoover like one of these you can use this on the machine and it will fit just fine 
So if you do have another turbo brush that you can use, it does fit on this machine just fine. So that's pretty much that. Now as far as its ability to get underneath things, because of the fact that you can't really recline this all the way, it's not the best at getting underneath things. But if you have something like a relatively high coffee table, you can just barely get underneath it. Otherwise, the front starts to lift up. So in my experience, it's just good enough to get underneath my coffee table. And the coffee table that I do plan on replacing this with shouldn't be any lower to the ground. So this still should be fine. But as far as getting underneath beds, getting underneath couches, you know, it, it the little dial gets in the way but it gets a little bit underneath it it gets as much as you realistically need because at that point you don't have very high traffic underneath there then again unless you have cats like mine do who like to get underneath the couch in which case you can very easily buy a couple extra wands and a floor attachment and go underneath that way so that's pretty much that this is my full review of the hoover wind tunnel tempo bagged upright vacuum it's definitely a good budget choice now, again, for my money, I would still get the Sanitaire, even if it is a little bit cheaper, the SO4110A specifically, or I should say even if it is about the same price and has a little bit less going for it, because it still cleans about as well. The bags are much cheaper, although you can interchange the bags, and it overall is just lighter and easier to use, in my opinion, and because sometimes these brush roll shutoff mechanisms do fail, so again, that's another reason why I strongly recommend turning the machine off and letting the brush roll stop spinning before you change this, as otherwise these mechanisms can fail over time. So as long as you do that, you shouldn't have any problems. So anyways, let's give it a run. Hi, Rika. Anyway, guys, this is Intellitech Studio signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you for liking, watching, and subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you all have a good one. Peace.